hello hello angel here welcome to back to my channel did you hear that noise that was my cat doing a total you know cartoon takeoff from the floor <laughs> just trying to run away as quickly as she could anywho hello and welcome back have you been here before welcome welcome uh, are you new welcome welcome lovely to have you here so today I really fancy starting a new tarot challenge or a tarot game. Uh, this has come about uh, through me sorting out my decks recently, um, reorganising them on my tarot shelf. And I really fancied like doing like an, um, an alphabet tarot game whereby um, I choose a deck for every letter of the alphabet and I want to see how far through the alphabet I can get. Um, hopefully to Z, we'll see, um, showing one deck for each letter of the alphabet. Does that make sense? I hope so. So my plan is to get as far as I can and then I'm going to tag two people and challenge them to get as far as I did or further. Fingers crossed. Okay, the rules. The rules are the ring. The rules. <laughs> yeah, of course there are rules. Of course there are rules. <laughs> uh, okay, the rules are um, we're only using tarot or we're only using oracle. We're not going to bl um, blend the two together in this challenge. So we're going to stick to tarot or oracle. Um, you've got one, or I've got, or we've got one wild card gav, jail free deck, and that is in the form of an oracle. So, for instance, if you don't have a deck for the letter B, you can use an oracle if you've got a um, an oracle that starts with the letter B, and that's the only oracle you can use. And you need to get as far as you can through the alphabet with only tarot until you can't go any further. Then it's time to tag two new people to beat your score or to beat your result. Are you with me? Does this make sense? I hope so. It's going to explain it as I go along anyway. You'll, you'll, you'll kind of, you'll kind of get, get the gist. Okay, so uh, anything else you need to go through? Oh yeah, if you want to make it a bit more difficult, you might want to just use indie decks, for instance. You know, no pressure. <laughs> or maybe just mass market decks. Or maybe out of print decks. I mean, goodness me, that'll be a toughie. But you know, depending how big your collection is, you might be able to do it. So, um, you do you, boo. Uh, it'd be lovely if you want to join in. Even if I don't tag you, um, you know, and maybe you don't get tagged, do the challenge anyway if you want to. Uh, you don't need to film it. You can just do it for your own amu amusement or entertainment. Um, yeah, so there we have it. So let's get this show on the road. Okay, so we're starting with the letter A. A is for Tarot Apocalypsis. This is a mass market deck. I do believe it's Los Scarabeo. I've had this one in my collection for quite a while. These are the backs, which I think are gorgeous. Edge mine in black. And here we go with the cards. Now, I love the whole fantasy vibe. It gives me a bit of a 90s vibe, I've got to say. Love the colours. I've used this one previously. Um, it's a real, you know, clear shooter. Or a clear reader, should I say? Look at this. I love this. It's beautiful. Um, and I quite like the male energy in this deck. Um, this is one of the first decks that I got, which had this really um I don't know strong is the wrong word. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm gonna say actually in your face, masculine energy. This to me is very in your face. And I've I've previously I've gone for like very strong feminine uh, decks or old decks with feminine energy so this was this was like um, a total uh, u-turn for me so yep yeah, that was a let's take two more oh love it love it love it we're moving on to b so b is for bianco nero tarot uh, this is also a mass market deck i believe this is by us games these are the bags. I never edged mine. Um, and I love this one as well. I love the text on th these cards because it's so clear. You know, I haven't got to squint my eyes and try and see what it says. You know, it, it says it, it does what it says in the tin. You know, the King of the Wands. This is King of Wands. You can see it quite clearly. Love that, that it's very clear. Love that it's black and white. Um, I was looking for like a, another or a very clear Rider Waite Smith clone. Um, and this kind of did the job. So that's why I purchased this one. Look at this. Gorge. I mean, that's just fantastic. 
yeah I, um, I kind of use this one as um, a, a bit of a, a blending between a study deck and uh, a reader I think I originally purchased it with the with the thought that I was going to use it only as a study deck and then once I started um, you know just putting some cards to see what the what energy the deck had it just kind of led to some more readings but it's a real it's a real clear reader for me I really enjoy this one and I love it that it's black and white I feel it's the it's I don't know if it's um, supposed to create that that feeling or if it is actually, um, is it called woodblock printing? I'm not sure. But I think, you know, I think you know what I mean with this kind of thing. And even here with the flames, it might just be that it's supposed to be like it's a, a, um, a replica of that. I'm not too sure, but that's what it reminds me of. Anyway, or is it called woodblock printing? I'm not sure. You you know what I'm talking about. If I if I remember to put it on the screen, I'll put it on the screen for you. So yes, that was B. We're moving on to C. Let's 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 do this. So C is for the Crow Tarot, created by MJ Cullinane. I've also got her for Hexa Tarot, which I love, 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 love. These are the bags. I've edged mine in. It's like um, a, a metallic brown colour. And I tried to use this um, when I first received it, which was quite a long time ago, actually. This is the mass market version. Did I say that? And um, I, I don't know. I couldn't get along with it. I don't know what it was. So it's been put away. And since then, I haven't really done anything else with it, which which totally means I need to get it back out again. Um, I've got to say that crows are not an animal that I uh, feel any specific kind of connection to. I've got nothing against them. <laughs> there are a lot of crows in my area where I live. Um, yeah, I don't know. And, you know, I tend to say that animal decks are not really my my bag, my thing. And, you know, I say that and then I've got, you know, quite a lot of animal decks in my collection. So that's not really an excuse either. I don't know. It's this, I just I suppose that there's been other decks that have kind of been calling to me louder. But this one needs to come out and be worked with. And I'm wondering why this one isn't in order. I usually put my decks back in order when I'm not using them. That's bizarre. Love this. Hello. Yeah, that's my kitty boy. Look at this, it's beautiful. Let's take two more. And then we're moving on to the next letter. Love, love, love. Okay, so that was C for Crow Tarot. Uh, we're on to D. So D is for Dream Vision Tarot. This is the second edition. This was a Kickstarter that I backed maybe like a year and a half ago or something like that. These are the backs I think are beautiful. They're like edged in like um, royal blue colour, maybe I would say. And I love this art style. I think it's amazing. Let's do this instead, actually. So you can see the cards a wee bit better. And it was the colours that basically swung this deck for me, of purchasing it in the first place. I think I originally saw it on Tarot Tube. And then I, it was quite early in my journey, so I didn't know anything about indie decks, didn't know anything about mass market decks. I didn't know there was any difference, really. Um, and so I, I googled this one. And then I realised or learnt that there was Indie decks, and then I realised the difference in prices. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, that's going to be really expensive. This is the card that kind of swung the deck for me. I think that's I think this is my favourite strength card. I think, although a, um, a strength card with a wolf in it would maybe pip at the pose, but I do love that. Um, yeah. Uh, and so when so I didn't purchase it, I didn't purchase the indie version just, you know, willy nilly. Um, and then a few, maybe like a year and a half later, two years later, this one came up again on uh, Kickstarter. And then I was able to back it and I was like, yep, 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 yep. I'm going to do it. It was on my wish list and um, I really wanted it. And this deck, I've got to say, um, it sounds very bizarre. Um, this kind of taps me into. Ancest it gives me an ancestral. It's got an ancestral voice. Hear me out. Wait, I know this is going to sound bizarre, but hear me out. It's it gives me an ancestral voice. However, like I'm I'm thinking of like a cosmic ancestral voice. Does that make sense? I was surprised also when that voice came through to me on these on the readings that I received. But that's that's the energy. That's what it taps me into. It taps me into my cosmic ancestors. So that's what I use this deck for. Last one. That was D. Moving on to E. Now E is for the Everyday Witch Tarot Mini. Look at this itty bitty uh, little tuck box. Isn't that sweet? This totally gives me a 
I don't know if it was just me that did it in the 80s. Me and my sister used to do this a lot in the 80s. We used to <laughs> put empty crisp packets under the grill to reduce them in size. <laughs> did anybody else do that in the 80s and 90s? Was that just me? This is the vibe. That gives me the vibe of this. I don't know why. I suddenly got that flashback. I don't know. It's all very bizarre. I clearly need to drink more or less coffee today. I don't know. <laughs> These are the facts. I'm going to definitely hold this up to the camera. Oh, I've edged mine in yellow. I got this also quite early on in my journey. Um, I used it quite a bit, but I never felt uh, pulled to purchase the uh, the bigger version with the guidebook because I didn't feel it needed the guidebook. I felt this was really like, you know, a right away Smith clone, um, it, you know, and it kind of it spoke to me about, uh, you know, the images spoke to me about what the card was about. Um, so, yeah, I never I never purchased the guidebook or the, or the larger, um, the larger, um, what's the word? The larger version. Uh, I love the tower card in this deck. I think it's one of my favourite tower cards. I think I've mentioned that before. I mean, look at this. It's like the tower's coming down and she is sneakily holding that wand to the side of her. Like, you know, she was the reason that tower came down. And I love that. I love that. Sometimes you just need to bring your own tower down. Even though it may be, you know, causes a bit of pain and a bit of uncomfort or discomfort uncomfort what am I talking about let's take two more I'm making up new words as I go along here that's excellent so yep E was for the everyday witch tarot this dinky dinky little deck I love that it's so cute moving on so F is for field tarot this is a US games deck mass market I believe it was indie once upon a time uh, these are the beautiful backs I think are gorgeous and I've edged mine like a metallic green colour, which suits the cards really well, I think. Okay, so this is a obviously a tarot deck. However, I have actually used it as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? As an oracle deck. Because of the keywords, I say that and there's no keywords. Wait, wait for it, wait for it. Here we go. Three of Wands, Vision. Uh, Ten of Cups, Harmony. Queen of Wands, Vibrancy. Now, I don't tend to have very many decks with keywords on them like this. Um, I think maybe like the Cozy Witch Tarot is one of the f other few I've got, which have got so, kind of like keywords or key phrases on. Um, but I think they, they make really great, um, like doubles up really well as an Oracle deck, I've got to say, when it's got the keywords on. And also it's a great jump off point for other follow on questions um, while, whilst doing a tarot reading. Also, also, I've got to say, it's very handy when you are a beginner and you need a bit of a prompt if you know if you're looking at the six of what the, the six of pentacles and you can't remember what that meaning is obviously that this gives you a bit of a, a bit of a jumping off point so let's take two more if you can hear any scratchings or scruffling on, under my desk it's my kitty cat he's gone and hidden himself under there so he's probably found you know i don't know what he might have found but <laughs> oh no he's out he's back uh love this so yeah that was f for the field tarot let's move along so moving on to G, and G is for Goddess of Love Tarot. I love this deck. It's quite a new deck in my collection. I think I saw this first on Sylvie's channel, Tar Tarot Magpie, um, I think. And uh, I, it kind of swung it for me, and I was like, yeah, I need to get that deck in my collection. I've edged mine in red. And when I bought it in, I was a bit naughty. Well, naughty, not really naughty, but I didn't really know what I was bringing this deck in for. I didn't have a purpose for it. And then once I bought it in... Um, I suddenly felt a really strong need to start working with Lilith uh, and Lilith's arch uh, archetype. And this deck, along with the Primordial Tarot and even um, uh, Black Moon Lilith Oracle, tapped me into Lilith's energy. And that's what this deck has become for me. It's kind of um, cemented itself within that combination of decks and within that practice. I love the guidebook. The guidebook is absolutely amazing. Um yeah so yeah that was the, the goddess of love tarot love it love it love it, love it. uh we're moving on to h let's do this okay h is for horror tarot <gasps> i love this deck can i just show you the inside of the box because it's like it's amazing look at this i love that i love that um now you might well think that the horror tarot kind of you know is not relegated, well, yeah, kind of relegated to the autumn um, 
months and maybe like Samhain or Halloween. But this for me is out all the time. It sits on my, I know this sounds bizarre, you know, work with me here. Uh, it sits on my self-love and in a child altar. I know it sounds bizarre. I know it, I know it does. But, and it does sound a bit bizarre, but this taps me into my shadow self along with the Darkwood Tarot. This is a really great, um, pairing with the Darkwood Tarot. I know, I know it sounds really strange. I know it sounds strange. I hear myself saying it and I, and I know, I know. Um, and this, this deck actually came out yesterday, which was not planned for April. Um, but it, it was calling to me. It had a message to tell me. And so I, I pulled this out whilst, whilst I was working with my fairy tale theme this month and um, the Darkwood Tarot. And it, it wasn't wrong. You know, it, it was totally right. It had a message for me, which I really needed to hear at that moment. So I love this one. And I know that quite a few people have mentioned about the, the text. I don't know if you can see this. It's quite hard to read. You see that? It's quite difficult to read. But it doesn't bother me. You know, I'm getting older. So I, there are quite a few decks I have trouble reading. So, you know, I just put it down to my old age, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure you've seen this one. You might even use it. Halloween. If you use it all year round, let me know. I'd love to know. So yeah, that was H. That was the Halloween tarot. No, it was the horror tarot. I'm lying to you. We're moving on. <laughs> so I, in a light tarot, this is a low scarabeo deck. These are the backs. I love these backs. Um, I haven't edged mine yet. And I haven't had this deck so long in my collection either. Um, I haven't even worked with it, so it's still in order. Um... I think I saw this deck on Robin's, Robin's channel, Robin's Reflections. Um, I love Robin's channel, just FYI. And I wanted a deck that was a bit more modern, uh, which could tap me into my yoga practice. Obviously, I could have used any deck for that, you know, but I wanted this one. So I purchased it because I'm a naughty monkey. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I just I like the modern um theme i like the, the i just i just like the whole thing i like the color palette of it i like that it's a bit more subdued i mean there obviously is color going on in the in the deck but it is a, a bit of a calmer color palette and that, that was quite i think that's quite important obviously when you're you know when you're or for me when i'm using this for, for yoga um yeah i found it quite a grounding calming deck um, not that I've used it as yet, but you know, that's what kind of drew me to it in the first place. So yeah, can't really say much more about it because I haven't used it yet, but it's totally my, at the minute I'm using the, um, the yoga tarot for my yoga practice. My plan is, is to bring this one in when that will happen. I don't know, but watch this space. This is beautiful. So yeah, there we have it. Uh, the inner light tarot. Um, let's move along. Okay, ten letters in. We're doing well. We're going strong. Uh, J is for Japaritzi tarot. I love this deck. I say that about all the decks, but you know, obviously, I wouldn't have them in my collection if I didn't love them. Uh, these are the backs, which I don't feel go with the images, but that's just my humble opinion. I've never edged mine. Um, now I'm gonna say that I bought this deck into my collection because I like the artwork, didn't have a plan for it. Uh, then it's gotta be like two years ago, maybe, I started working with All Set. And this deck called to me to uh, work with All Set with. And this is the deck that, you know, presented itself and, um, and that tapped me into that energy the best. So this is, it, this is the deck I used. Now I don't work with All Set anymore, um, however, this deck feels still like All Set's deck, so I, I, that sounds bizarre. But you know, I don't, I don't pull it out for other readings because I still feel as though it's um, de a dedicated deck for All Set. So I don't know what, 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 I'm, going to do, what I'm going to do about that. Really, um, I might just have to get over myself and uh, just use it. Look at this. This is beautiful. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yes, so anyhow, that is the Japaritzi Tarot with its beautiful, amazing artwork. Um, that was J. I love this. 
Right, stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> that was J. Move on to K. So K is for Kawaii Tarot. This is my, I would say my only cutesy cutesy deck. These are the backs and I haven't edged mine, but I want to edge mine in like a metallic blue, I think. Um, uh, yeah, I saw this on Candy's channel, I feel. And I feel that like I even saw this, this deck on three girls, one deck. Um, and I'm sure that Heather had this, but don't quote me on that. Um, and I was just like, I totally want that deck. Although it's not my aesthetic. I wouldn't say it's my aesthetic, really. I don't tend to go for cutesy decks. Not there's anything wrong with that, but, um, I, you know, I thought, well, because I don't tend to have those kind of decks in my collection, I could at least have one that totally appeals to me. So this is my deck that I get out when I need a palette cleanser and I need a bit of a, a downtime with some of the intense, heavy work I'm doing. Um, not that I'm saying that all of my readings are intense and heavy, but quite often I'm doing shadow work um, and healing um, work. Uh, using tarot as a tool and oracles at all and so this kind of deck is kind of like um a reprise or like a like a breath of fresh air i'm gonna say i mean you know i can't i can't bring this forward without having a big fat grin on my face because it's just so it's just it's just so i can't think of a better word than cute but it is it's just so cute it just makes me giggle i mean look i mean how cute is that hedgehog <laughs> I mean, look. <laughs> so yeah, that was K. Uh, let's move along. Uh, a, B, C. Do you know what I need to start from A? Uh, but you know what the next letter is. So let's let's move along to the next letter. <laughs> L is for Lorenzi Tarot. This is a US Games um, uh, deck. This was a, a mass market which I had on pre-order. I did a walkthrough on my channel of this one. These are the bags. I haven't edged mine. And to be honest, once I've done the walkthrough, I was disappointed. This is the only deck, I think, that I've done a walkthrough and I've thought, no, I'm not feeling it. I'm totally not feeling this. Anyway, so it kind of sat about for a wee while um, and I was getting a bit more frustrated with it, which I'm not going to I'm not gonna go back go into. If you want to know why I was frustrated, uh, I'll link the, um, what's the word, the walkthrough in the uh, description box if you'd like to look. Anyway. Um, and then this deck was kind of on the chopping block for me after a few months of not using it. I was just getting more and more frustrated with it. And I just thought, nope, I'm going to put it, you know, I'm going to put it for rehoming. And it was sitting on my uh, lounge table um, because I'd um, actually filmed a video of decks on the, on the chopping block, which never got posted. And um, I think a day after that, they were still sitting on my, on my lounge table. And um, I wanted to start a poetry practice. And... Um, I was kind of thinking about what decks I could use for that. I wanted to use tarot to kind of spark the inspiration or, you know, spark the poetry writing. And this uh, this deck, like, fell, fell, my gaze fell on this deck. And I was like, oh, that could be a bit interesting, even though it is on the chopping block. So I pulled it out and it worked perfectly. It was really, it really got the, the cogs churning and... Yeah, it really, I, well, well, I don't know what else I can, the other, another kind of um, expression I can use, but it really, um, you know, uh, lit the inspiration or lit the, the spark for the inspiration for, for the poetry that I wanted to write and, and uh, bring into my practice. So since then, that's what this deck has been used for. So it's gone from the chopping block to a very specific practice, um, which I never really counted on. So, you know, this kind, of, this kind of kind of was a bit of a, a lesson to not maybe not be too uh, fast to rehome decks because, you know, I've obviously you know, been drawn to buy them. There's obviously been something that's drawn me to it. Um, and sometimes decks just need a bit of time to marinate to kind of. Um, yeah, they just need a bit of time to call to you to be worked with. So yeah, Lorenzi Tarot. Long explanation. Let's um let's move along. Okay, M. Mystic Monday's Tarot. This was the deck I purchased to scratch the itch for the dream. Wait, what was the D deck that I had? I'm gonna put the name on the screen. It was I bought this to scratch the itch for that when I wanted that. Love these um love this gilding. I mean that's just that's just amazing amazing um 
yes so I, I purchased this day to scratch stitch for the other one which is now on the screen um loved it very glossy cardstock i don't mind bit of a feels a bit froth inspired this one used it for quite a while and then i just suddenly stopped then i got the whatever that deck is called on the screen now uh in and then this kind of one this this one kind of you know went away and hasn't come back out again why is that i should be using this more i don't know if this is stuff inspired by the way because i don't i don't i do have a fourth deck but my studying of that deck you know is not going particularly very well it's not it's not been very success, successful um what i can say about this deck is that obviously i used it a long long time ago and as i mentioned before in a recent video you know i obviously learned a lot more about the tarot since having since purchasing and using this deck the last time so it's going to be really interesting to get it back out again actually and see if it speaks to me in a very different way than what it did when i first purchased it I don't think I would rehome this deck because I just love the colouring. I love the, I'm going to say simplicity of it. You know, it feels quite, it gives you space to breathe because the, you know, there's, the, I want to say the images are quite simple. I don't mean that in a derogatory kind of way, but they are quite simple. <laughs> I can't think of a better, better way to say that. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah. It does feel like a bit of a palette cleanse, palette, a palette cleanser again. That's not a that's not a ghost. That's my surprise, surprise, kitty cat, uh, pushing at the door. So yeah, love this, love, love, love. And I totally need to get this back one back out again. Why am I not using this deck? Oh, watch this space. It might well come up in a in a a forthcoming decks and intentions video that was m let's move along to n and here comes my one and only get out of jail free deck <gasps> okay so n put a real spanner in the works i couldn't find a deck beginning with n what's that all about i need to get shopping no i don't i'm on a low low buy year i don't need to go shopping <laughs> um anyway so n for me it's kind of a it's kind of semi you know cheating but not and Semi Oracle, but not anyway. Look, stop babbling and show the deck. Um, this was the Nicoletta Giacoli tarot. It's not anymore because I cut all the borders off and I cut all the um, numbers and all that malarkey off. And now this is an, in, uh, an intuitive um, oracle for me. So this is my one and only uh, oracle deck that I'm allowed to show. So fingers crossed now I can find a deck for all the rest of the um, letters in the alphabet. I'm sure you've seen the Nicoletta Giacoli tarot, or sorry, Oracle, or either way, before. I'm sure you've seen the artwork. So I'm not going to stay too long on this one. Love this. Two more. <gasps> okay, I'm kind of getting a bit nervous and I'm kind of getting a bit of a sweat going on now because I'm really actually worried. How much further can I go without needing a, you know, a, a get out of jail Oracle, which has now been used up? Uh, let's move on to the next letter, if possible. So, whew, I found an O. O is for Out of Hand Tarot. This is an indie deck by Jamie Sawyer. Uh, this was a Kickstarter that I backed. Oh, well, there you go, in 2022. Um, I haven't used this deck. Why not? I don't know. It's been on my to-use list. And I did pull it forward for my wild deck, wild card deck in uh, July, maybe. And it never got used. I don't know why, because it's a beautiful deck. I love the concept of it you know out of hand it's all about seeing um the the cards from the position of the hands that'll make more sense as i start showing the cards and it's gorgeous now i think i think what happened was i backed this one and i also backed the tower of oneness at the same time and they're i'm gonna say uh they're a little bit similar whereby you're kind of looking at the card from the first person aspect is that right? Must, am I right in saying that? I'm sure I am. Um, or maybe not the first person aspect, but it, uh, they've, they've kind of got that kind of similar vibe for me. Mm, oh wait, am I, am I right in saying that? I'm just making this up. Hmm, not sure. But they, I know they definitely came at the same time in any case. And um, I didn't use the Tower of One on the side right at the beginning. And then it found its place in my, um, in my practice within my... Um, in a child practice 
So I really should just get this one out and use it. I don't know. But it's the same again, you know, there's other decks that are calling louder to me at the minute. It's, you know, it's obviously just not, it's time to work with me. We're just not meant to work together at, at this moment in time. But I mean, I mean, this is gorgeous. I love this, the moon card. And I love the depictions of the, um, of the cards. I love this. I'm going to take just a couple more. And I love this, I love this full card. I think this is my most favourite full card. Merely because this, you know, this can be anybody on any day, you know, stepping out of their front door. It doesn't need to be a momentous leaping off of the cliff uh, moment. It can just be as simple as you're getting ready to start your day and you're walking out of your front door. And that could be your... That could be where your fool's journey starts. I love that. That kind of makes it so accessible, I think. Anyway, um, and look, it's going to stop there because this is just super duper fantastic. So that was O for Out of Hand Tarot. <gasps> kind of nervous. Am I going to find a deck for P? I don't know. Keep your fingers and your toes crossed. Let's go and see if I can find a deck for P. <gasps> yes, we found one. P is for Primordial Tarot. Adore this deck. Uh, this is a low scary bow deck and this is another deck that taps me into Lilith's energy. Now this deck I have been really interested in um, for quite a while, I Edge Mine in Black. Um, I've been really interested in quite a while but I was like thinking well, what, what's this going to tap me into, what am I going to use this uh, this deck for? And I kind of, it was on my wish list, off my wish list, in my Amazon cart, off my Amazon cart. Um, and then I think I just I think I just pressed the buy button on it because I was then suddenly thinking not suddenly but then I was thinking I could use this to tap into ancestral work you know um going going deeper or further back you know with my ancestors um so I got this home um opened it looked through it and then a couple of weeks later um Lily's energy started coming through to me and my need to work with that archetype, you know, I got that feeling that I needed to work with that archetype. And this deck jumped into my brain straight away and I was like, yes, this is the deck I need to work with, with Lilith. And that's what I did. I pulled it forward and it was like, took my breath away straight away. And when I first looked through it, I was thinking, I don't know, I don't know how, is this going to read well for me? Because it's obviously not very Rider Waite Smith. The, um, the suits are a little bit different. But this is a really intuitive uh, deck for me. And the colours don't relate to... I mean, this isn't... Um, let's look here. Um, they don't... The, the colours don't relate to the suits the way I've learnt them. And so that kind of threw me off a little bit at the beginning. But I read these really intuitively, these cards. And then I go to the guidebook as a, like a second layer... Uh, second... Yeah, second layer uh, to the reading. So, yep, love it. Totally found its niche in my collection. That was P. Let's move on to Q. Can you guess which deck I'm going to pull for Q? I think you can. Did you guess? Did you guess? Yeah, of course you did. It's the only deck in my collection that begins with Q, and it's the Queer Tarot. It's Money Black. I've shown this one recently, so I'm not going to stay too long on this one. You know me. I love me some colour, and it gives me a total 70s, 90s. Oh. Yeah, fancy dress kind of party vibe. <laughs> Not a big fan of the cardstock, got to say that. But apart from that, love this deck. Love it. Yes, that was cute. Um, I'm getting nervous. I really am getting nervous. Am I going to find a deck for R? <gasps> Let me go look at my tarot shelf. So, R is for Rainbow Moon Terror, of course it is. And I was nervous. Why was I nervous? Um, I don't show this deck very often, merely because it sits by my bed. Uh, I tend to pull cards in, you know, just from going to bed, basically. Um, you know, to kind of put things to rest that have maybe happened throughout the day, just to kind of get a, get a clearer reading before I lay my head down. Or maybe to, you know, pull the energy for the next, pull a card for the energy for the next day. Things like that. So although I use this one very often, I don't show it because it's always, as mentioned, beside my bed. Um, I bought this one on a whim because I love the uh, colour. I love the art style. And then once I got it home, it was like, 
I would say this was like a, a, one of my one of my soul decks. Um, I do have another one, the Darkwood Tarot. I would say is definitely a soul deck. Um, yeah, and it was kind of totally unexpected. It, this one blew me away. To, you know, it kind of sidelined me. I didn't expect it to, um, to be as uh, clear or as deep a reader as it actually is for me. So that's why this one is so trusted, or or I have it by my bed because it is a trusted reader and I don't want to have to think about the message before I go to bed. I want to just pull a card and, and get the message and know what it's all about. And that's what this deck does for me. Uh, I love this card so much that I bought a backup in the form of the indie version, which is called the, I want to say it's called Mabel, Marble Moon Tarot in the indie version. I found it on eBay uh, second hand and I was like, I don't know, should I? I don't really need a second copy. I, I don't have any second copies of any other decks. And I was like, oh, you might never get the chance again. Just buy it. And it wasn't expensive. I think it was £20, under £20, something like that. And it is actually a genuine copy of the indie version. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to buy it. And I did. <laughs> so I've got a second copy as well. Although I do prefer this one because I've kind of bonded with this one. Anyway, yes, that was that. Um, that was R. Um, what's the next letter of the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, I'm joking. It's um, S, right? If I've if I've thought correctly, we're on to S. Let's take a look. So we're on to S. S is for Sugar Skull Tarot. This was a definite Dawn Michelle made me do it. Well, she didn't make me do it. She didn't put my arm behind my back. But I saw it. I saw this deck on her channel, and I was like, Oh, I think I would like that deck in my collection too. So there, there we have it. Um, I know that Dawn Michelle um uh, chopped off all the borders and rounded the edges. But I, I really liked it exactly as it was. And I quite like the spiky edges. Um, total straight shooter, this one. <laughs> straight shooter, it's got a cowboy thing going on. Or, you know, like a, not a cowboy, but like a what, western. No, I'm, just stop talking, Angel. Just stop talking. Just just a stop, 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 stop. Um, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so it is, it is a straight shooter. Totally does says what it does it does what it says in the tin. Um, obviously it's a, a Rider Smith clone, but I really like it. I like the fact that the um, the suits are color uh, like color code. I'm going to say. And yeah, I just I just really like it. I haven't got anything else to say. I just really like it, and that's okay too. Look at this. Uh, this sits um, in, on my tarot shelf with my Halloween decks. But I don't, I don't know why, because I don't class it as a Halloween um, themed deck at all. I bring this out and, you know, use it throughout the year. And I've also paired this one, actually, with the Animal Apothecary uh, Oracle. And that's been a chef's kiss uh, pairing. It's been fantastic. So, yeah, there we have it. Sugar Skull Tarot. Love it. Need to, need to bring it out more. Need to bring it out more, quite, quite simply. Uh, moving on to T. Okay, T is for Tinseltown Tarot. <gasps> Love, look, check this out. Check this out. It's like a, an old fashioned cigarette box. Well, not an old fashioned because I think the cigarette box is, is still like this. But this is fantastic. I haven't used it. I tried to use it. No, wait. Oh, lordy, lord. Lordy, lordy, lord. These are the backs I think are beautiful. Need to edge mine. I just want to edge in a beautiful baby pink. I tried to use it and it just was flat. F L A T flat. But I'm not going to give up on this beauty because I think the artwork is like really fun. This is the kind of deck that, you know, I get it out, it kind of makes me smile. Gives me a Wonder Woman vibe. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. And I do like this whole kind of like uh, Hollywood glamour vibe. I mean, look at this. And, you know, I. I should I need to get better at actually, which is a note to self for 2024, although we're four months into 2024. Note to self, um, bring out decks that haven't worked for you more often just to try them out. Um, which yeah. I'm gonna tell you a little story. It's not a very exciting story, and you're gonna at the end of the story you're gonna go, why did you tell me that? Why did you even bother saying that? But I'm gonna anyway. I used to work for my boss, a boss, um, back in England, who hated olives. And he detested them with a um, with a, um, a passion. He absolutely detested them. But like every month or two, he would eat an olive just to double check if he still hated them or not. <laughs> and at the time I thought, that's really bizarre. Why would you put yourself through that if you know you detest them and you hate them? But he was kind of expecting that one day his taste buds would change and he would, you know, enjoy the olive. 
And that's what I need to start doing with these decks. Not that I hate them and detest them and with a passion, but, you know, for decks that aren't working for me, but I love, um, I need to get them out more often and just, you know, give, take like, a bit like a car, take it for a test drive, give it a whirl, you know, see if it works. I told you, you're going to wonder why I told you that story, but you know, you know, what can I tell you? You know, strange things happen on this channel, do they not? <laughs> Moving on to the next letter. Okay, so I honestly thought I was stumped here. I thought this is where the video would end, but no, we're on to uh, the Uncom Uncommon Tarot. These are the bags. I've shown this recently in a video. I feel I've shown it recently. Maybe not. Maybe I'm lying to you. It's not the, not the, not the meaning for how I'm lying to you. This is really underrated deck, I think. Mass market. Uh, not a big fan of the text. I find it quite difficult to read, but that's just me. Um, but I really like this deck and I got it secondhand on eBay. Uh, it was an eBay find, and when I when I got it in, and I read with it. It was like a really, it was really sharp. It was like it wanted to like slap me in the face, and I was like, oh, well, all right then, okay. Um, and I've mentioned before, I think that I found a really good, um, actually, it was second hand as well on eBay. It was actually also an eBay find, an eBay Oracle. Um, I'm gonna put the name on the screen, and that deck totally softened this deck. So those are a bonded pair as well. So when I use that. The uncommon tarot with that deck that I'm pointing to now on the screen, right there. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. It's a really good balance because this one is quite sour. <laughs> it kind of really, it kind of slaps me in the face to get my attention. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But you don't always want your deck to slap you in the face to get your attention, right? Sometimes you, you know, you just, you know, you want a bit of a smoother ride with your with your readings, I feel. So yeah, that was the uncommon tarot. <gasps> Okay, do we have one uh, a deck for V? Drum roll, please. Drrr. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, I did. Vox Arcana. That was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> the Voice of Tarot. Love this deck. This is a deck I used last month and even in January. I need to edge mine. I haven't done it yet. Um, this is a deck by 78 different artists, I think. I've shown it quite recently, so I'm not going to show it very, very much more. Because you've already seen it and you know what this one looks like. Although, obviously, you know, maybe you don't. Love this. And I adore this deck. Uh, this uh, card, sorry. That's amazing. Yeah, so there we have it. That was V. My, my least liked card. But I've mentioned before that uh, Marina from Waves of Your Soul. Um, uh, I saw this deck on their channel. And they and I've been like I wanted this deck for a long time, and that card stopped me from buying it, which is really unusual. Single cards don't usually stop me buying a deck, but that card was like, oh, no, I don't like it. Um, and then Marina explained the the thought process and the meaning behind the card, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with that. I can totally get on board with that. So there we have it. That was the Vox Arcana. Um, w is the next letter. What do we think? Will I find a deck for W or will I not? Place your bets. Now, the cupboard is empty. I don't have a deck for W. So this is where my journey ends. My alphabet challenge finishes, unfortunately. So um, I've counted 22 letters, 22 decks I've shown. I'm missing a decks, decks for W, X, Y and Z. Um, so 22 out of 26, but I'm going to deduct one point because I had to show you a an Oracle deck. So 21 out of 26. Who am I tagging? I'm going to tag Sylvie, actually, from Tara Magpie. I know that Sylvie has the Zeke's Arcana, so I want to see if um, they can get to Z. I'm holding my fingers and my toes crossed for you. I've even got my legs and my arms crossed, I, I promise. Um, Mand from Mystic Mand. What do you think? Do you fancy, do you fancy the challenge? Are you up for the challenge? Um, if I'm tagging you, don't feel any pressure. You do you, boo. If you don't fancy doing it, don't do it. Um, if I haven't tagged you and you fancy doing it, do it. And, you know, just do it for yourself. You don't have to film. You can just, you know, a bit of a bit of a bit of a, a fun thing to do if you've got a bit of time over. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you for coming along this journey again with me. Uh, thank you for listening to my rambles about uh, my old bosses who eat olives now and again. I don't know. <laughs> I do wonder myself when I open my mouth when things come out. And I think, where did that come from? Why do I have to say that? Anywho. Um, yeah. Have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Take care. and. Um, Hope to see you next time. Toodaloo!